Hi everyone and thanks for joining me. Today we're going to take a look at how to make machine embroidery cut files using Embrilliance and the Cricut. Let's get started. So here we are in the Embrilliance software. So I have a design. I created this design myself using the software. But regardless of whether you are uploading a design that you purchased somewhere else or you created your own design, once you have an applique that you want to create a cut file, and I'm specifically focusing for this video on an SVG cut for the Cricut. The Cricut uses SVGs. You can also save silhouette files. You can save SVG files, and I'll show you the different formats. Um, and you can cut this with the Brother Scan and Cut as well. But we're focusing on the Cricut for this particular video. So here we have our applique. And if you click on the applique, portion of the design, you can see that it has three different colors here. The first one is your placement. The second one is your tack down. And the third one is your finishing stitch. So we're going to take a look at this very first one. We're going to click on the color. This is the placement and this menu pops up and you're probably familiar with this menu if you use in brilliance, but you'll notice up here, this is the color menu. But right here, if you click on this tab to the right, it's called applique. And this is the screen that allows you to create cut files. So one thing that you have to do is tell it that this is an applique position. You have to give it a job. So we're telling it this is the applique position stitch. Once you do that, you're able to create an SVG file. So all I'm going to do is go over here. Here is an inflate button. You want to be careful using this inflate button because if you make it too big, it's your satin stitch is likely not going to cover it. If you uh, don't make it inflated at all, then you're, if you don't have it placed just exactly right, uh, miss, the stitches could miss your fabric altogether. So what I like to do is just go to 1.2. That's worked well for me. Now, depending on how wide your satin stitches, you might be able to go a little bit bigger or how small your satin stitches, then you're going to have to really watch that you don't get too wide so that your fabric's sticking outside the satin stitch. But 1.2 is working well for me. And then we're going to click save. Now when the save menu comes up, it gives you all of these different formats that you can save it in. So you can save it for as an SVG, you can save it as a scan and cut file, you can save it as a silhouette studio file, you could save it as a sure cuts a lot file, all kinds of different formats here. We are focusing on the Cricut today, so we're going to use the SVG file. And I'm gonna save it to the, let's just save it to the desktop. Oops, desktop. And we're gonna call this ghost. And I'm gonna put 1.2, he's 1.2 bigger. Now, one thing about Cricut design space is sometimes it resizes the SVG. So we want to make sure that that's not happening. So I'm just going to put that up there. This is 1.2 larger than the original file. Now keep in mind that your, we're just going to say, okay, we're going to close that. Keep in mind that your satin stitch is a little bit bigger than your placement stitch. So if we click on this ghost, it's telling us that it's two and 15 16 inches wide, two and 15 16 inches wide. So an eighth of, or a 16th of an inch short of three inches by three and a quarter inches tall. So even though we inflated that, it's still going to be a little bit less than that because we're not working with the satin stitch. We're working with that position stitch, which is a little bit smaller so that it covers the satin stitch covers it. Does that make sense? So keep this in mind, two and 15 sixteenths or three and a quarter inch tall. So let's open up Cricut Design Space. So we have a blank canvas. So we're gonna go upload, upload image, browse. And we have right here, our ghost 1.2 open. You can name it here if you like. I'm gonna click upload. You can see I've done this a few times because I was trying to figure out what exactly was the best size to inflate it. So let's go with this one. This will be the most recent. And we're gonna click add to canvas. 
So we can see this guy is 3.86 inches wide by 3.19 high. Now remember up here, our satin stitch is three and a quarter inches wide. So this should be about right, it's close. So all we have to do is click make it. We're gonna use, I'm using the Cricut Maker 3. If you're using the original Cricut Maker, I don't think you have to make this choice. And it's right here, we don't need to mirror it or anything and we're gonna click continue. So prior to uh, cutting the fabric, you want to add some heat and bond on the back side. If you're not familiar with heat and bond, it's just an iron on adhesive. You've probably seen me use it in other videos if you've been following this channel. So you're just going to put a little heat and bond on the back side of your fabric. I like to put the heat and bond side down on my fabric mat. If you prefer to put the fabric side down, make sure that you mirror your image. But since I'm putting heat and bond side down, I don't need to mirror my image. So I've sent the project over to the Cricut. I told it that I had cotton fabric on a mat. If you're using the original Cricut Maker, I don't believe you need to choose whether you're working with a mat or without. I have the Cricut Maker 3, so you do need to tell it that you're using a mat. This is the rotary blade that I'm using. If you have a Cricut Explorer, you can use the bonded fabric blade for simpler images. I wouldn't try it on something very, very intricate, but it does work pretty well with basic images and it would work for this particular file. So we're gonna let the Cricut Maker go ahead and cut out this fabric. I really recommend if you're going to get into cutting fabric using the Cricut Maker or the Cricut Maker 3. That rotary blade makes a huge difference in being able to cut very intricate projects. Look how cleanly that cut our applique. So we're going to take that off the mat and set that aside. So let's take a look at what we need for this project. So first of all, you're going to need your directions. Step number one is your placement stitch. That's just simply going to tell you where to put the fabric. Step two, you're going to put the batting and the fabric down and it's going to tack it down. Step three is going to be the applique placement stitch. Step four is going to be the applique tack down. So it's going to stitch around this. Step five is going to be your finishing satin stitch around the ghost. Step six is going to be the quilting and then step seven is going to be the final stitch where everything goes together. Just before step seven, you're going to add your uh, insel bright on the back and you're going to add your backing fabric on the front. So we'll walk through all of that, but that's your color placement. I'm going to do everything in black except step number five, which is my satin stitch. I'm going to put that in orange. The other thing I have out is a pressing mat and this little, this is a Nikopa uh, mini press. I love this. It's very similar to the Cricut uh, mini easy press. Super great for applique. We're going to use some temporary adhesive. So I like to get everything ready beforehand. So the, the applique we can just set aside. We're not ready for that yet. We're gonna take our front piece and we're gonna take our batting. I'm just using some um, cotton batting that I had on hand. This might even be a blend, but I'm just going to use that. I'm gonna spray a little bit of 505 adhesive and I'm gonna put my fabric right on top and just make sure that that is nice and smooth. So that's ready to go. Right before I put this on the hoop, I'm gonna spray the back of it with some more temporary adhesive. I've hooped a piece of cutaway stabilizer. You can use tearaway if you want. I just figured this is a hot pad. I'm not really concerned about um, getting it all out of there or it being stiff. So I'm going to use cutaway. I just find that it gives you an overall better result. Um, so that's up to you which stabilizer you want to use. And then this backing piece, we don't need to do anything to, as well as the insole bright, we don't need to do anything to. So let's hop over to the machine and get stitching. All right, so I've lined everything up. Again, I've programmed all my colors. Everything's in black except stitch number five, which is my satin stitch. And I'm just going to double check that we are good to go. Just doing a quick trace. 
that looks good. So we're good to go. We're going to go. I also, on my colors, I put the machine on automatic manual uh, just so that it's going to just stop after every step. So let's go ahead and stitch step number one. So I've got my fabric that we made with the little sandwich and I put a little bit of spray adhesive on the back on the batting and that's just going to help it stay in place. Make sure that's nice and smooth in place. Let's do stitch number two. So stitch number two, tacked our fabric down. Now stitch number three is going to be our applique placement. All right. You could just put your applique down, but I'm going to go ahead and remove it from the machine. So we're back over here at our ironing surface. We've got our press heated up. You can see this applique is going to fit right over those lines. And you do want to make sure that all of the lines are covered up. I'm going to use my iron and I'm just going to press this into place. That heat and bond on the back is going to melt it right down into place and make sure that nothing moves. All right, so we've got our applique in place. We're going to go ahead and stitch the next one, which will be the tack down. And you're going to notice it's going to tack down right inside this fabric. Now it's going to do the satin stitch. And the next step is the satin stitch. So it's going to go ahead and put that finishing stitch on there. This is so easy because we don't have to stop and cut that fabric. Once we finish the applique, we're going to go ahead and do the quilting. Once all your quilting is done, we're going to remove it from the machine and get it ready for the final stitch. So here's our finish. You can see how nicely that applique is finished and I didn't have to cut it. The Cricut did it all for me. Very cool. All right, so what do we do now to finish it? We're gonna flip it over. You can trim this up if you want. I'm not gonna worry about it. I'm gonna take my piece of Insulbrite. I'm gonna put it shiny side down. I don't think it really matters. It depends where you look. I Googled it. Some places say shiny side towards the heat. Some say it doesn't matter. I'm just going to put it down. And we're just gonna tape this into place. You could spray, use spray adhesive if you want. Just wanna make sure that's going to stay put. All right, we're gonna flip it back over. We're gonna take our piece that's going to be our backing fabric and put it face down making sure it's very smooth. You can pin it if you want. I might just give it a little bit of a tape right here at the edge because I, when the seam comes around, I don't want that to accidentally fold down. So we've got it back on the machine. You might wanna just take a little peek, make sure that you've got it right side up if you're not sure. Again, I'm feeling, making sure everything is smooth on the back. All right, let's go ahead and do that final stitch. All right, that's the end of it. You can go ahead and remove it from the machine. I would take a good look, make sure everything got caught on both sides before you remove it from the hoop. All right, so we've got, removing it from the hoop. I'm just gonna take all my tape off. Depending whether you use tear away or cut away, you can tear away your stabilizer if you want. I use cut away, so I am going to cut. When you cut, you wanna cut about a quarter of an inch away from the stitched line. And where this opening is, you wanna leave about a half an inch. 
So I'm just gonna start cutting this down. Doesn't have to be exact. Make sure you're cutting with your scissors straight so that you're not accidentally cutting your stitches on the back. Okay, we're coming up on our opening side, so you're gonna see what I'm gonna do. Going about a quarter of an inch away from my stitches. And then when the stitch is in, I'm gonna go out and leave myself a little bit more room and then come back. Just like that. All right, so now you wanna go to your corners and just cut, trim the corners. Make sure you don't cut through your stitches. So mine looks something like that. That's not even fancy right there. You're gonna go look in here, go between the two fabrics. Make sure you're not going between the insole bread or your backing. I'm gonna go between the two fabrics and start turning this right side out. I find it's easiest to go to the furthest corner, put my finger on that corner and push it through and then start working the rest of it through. Take your time so you don't pop your stitches and really go through that hole and make sure those corners are nice and square. I've got a bone folder, so again, I'm gonna make sure I'm going inside the backing and pushing those corners out. All right, so now you're left with this opening. So this is where you're going to use your iron again. I'm gonna start flattening this out. And then we're going to tuck this in. That's why we left a little bit of extra so that we had room to tuck it in. And there should be a stitch right along there. You just wanna to try to get that even as you can. So that it looks kind of like that. I'm gonna press it. Hope everything stay in place. All right, so we've got that right. I've got a piece of, this is, there's called steam a seam. Um, there's one by Heat and Bond, different kinds of adhesive tape. This is basically the same thing as Heat and Bond, except for it's in a tape form, so. It's adhesive on this side. We've got paper on the top. I'm just gonna measure my hole. I'm gonna just tear a piece off about as big as my hole. I'm gonna take the adhesive side, which is the bumpy side, and I'm gonna slide it towards my backing right inside that hole. Trying to get it as smoothly as possible, or as smooth as possible. And then I'm gonna apply some heat. Once I've got that in there, just like heat and bond, we're melting that adhesive to the backing. You could also use fabric glue or hand stitch it closed if you want. Okay, we're gonna let that cool before we try to peel that backing. If you try to peel that backing too soon, it will just peel right off because it's still an adhesive, um, it's in a soft state. All right, once it's cooled down, you're going to reach inside there and you're going to grab the paper backing off. And you'll be left with adhesive inside your hole. So you're just going to close it back up. Put some heat back on it. Make sure everything's lined up the way you want it. And we're going to melt that adhesive to close it up. And there you can see it's all sealed up. You wanna again, let that cool down. Go ahead and give it a good press and you're done. Like I said, you're welcome to grab this particular design if you'd like to give it a try. It's in the description below the video. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and share. Don't forget to click that bell so that you're notified every time there's a new video. Thanks so much for watching and as always, never stop making. See ya, bye-bye.